Namaste everyone. In this lecture, I am going to explain you what is local potential. Local potential is also called graded potential. We all know the resting membrane potential for neuron is minus 70 millivolt. This means the cell membrane inside is negative when compared to outside. This accounts to potential difference across the cell membrane and the reason for this is presence of sodium potassium ATPase pump pumping 3 sodium out pumping 2 potassium inside creating negativity inside and also presence of leaky potassium channels that is taking out the potassium from the cell to the exterior creating negativity inside and also presence of non diffusible anions like proteins which are present within the cell. So all these will account to the resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolt in a neuron cell or nerve cell. So when you place two electrodes over the surface of the neuron and connect it to a galvanometer, there won't be any deflection because there is no potential difference across these two points, point A and point B. There is no potential difference between these two points. When the micro electrodes are placed, both the electrodes are placed over the surface of the cell membrane. If at all if you place one electrode outside and one electrode inside the cell membrane and connect it to a galvanometer, you find a deflection. So there exists a potential difference between these two points. That means there is a potential difference across the cell membrane and this accounts to minus 70 millivolt. So this is the negative potential difference minus 70 millivolt that is existing across the cell membrane of a neuron. So this resting membrane potential is nothing but a steady minus 70 millivolt potential difference across the cell membrane at rest. So what do you mean by rest? The cell membrane is not given any stimulus. Before the application of stimulus, there is 70 millivolt potential difference with negativity inside the cell when compared to outside. So and the ionic basis for this negativity inside the cell is explained by activity of sodium potassium ATPase pump and continuous leakage of potassium from the cell to the exterior even at resting state that is even before the application of stimulus. Now, what happens to the membrane potential when it is stimulated? So consider this is the cell membrane and initially at rest sodium potassium ATPS pump was active and the potassium ion channel was active and there is a continuous leakage of potassium and 3 sodium was pumped out so inside the cell was negative. So this is in the resting state. Now what happens when the membrane is stimulated? When a membrane is stimulated what happens? there occurs distortion in the cell membrane at the site of stimulus. At the site of stimulus, distortion in the cell membrane happens and within this portion of the cell membrane, the conductance for the sodium increases. The conductance for the sodium increases. So more and more positive charged sodium start entering the cell from outside. So if more and more positive charge sodium starts entering the cell, what happens to the negativity within the cell? The negativity in the, within the cell keeps on decreasing. So you take a graph and see, so if this is 0 and this is somewhere at minus 70 millivolt, so negativity starts decreasing or it goes, it starts going towards positivity. The membrane potential because of the entry of positively charged sodium ions will take the membrane potential from the resting state towards the positive side. 
so and how much is the amplitude of this depends upon the amount of sodium entry more and more sodium keep on entering will result in more and more positivity inside and taking the membrane potential towards zero so this we call it as local potentials or graded potentials so why we why we call this as graded potential see now if you increase the strength of the stimulus if you increase the strength of the stimulus the positivity entering the sodium ions entering will also be increased so you increase the strength of the stimulus the number of positive charge entering will also increase so from minus 70 millivolt it keeps on going towards positivity or it becomes less negative more and more so consider this is from minus 70 it is going to minus 65 millivolt with a strength of the stimulus one strength of the stimulus if you increase the strength of the stimulus to double this it can go up to minus 60 millivolt so consider this is the first stimulus with a particular strength which is uh, increasing the positive ion entry taking the membrane potential from minus 70 to minus 65 and consider now this is the second strength which is of higher stimulus this will account to more and more sodium entry more and more sodium entry and uh, the membrane potential becomes less and less negative or it goes towards more positive side so it can go from minus 65 to even minus 60 so that means the graded potential here uh, the amplitude amplitude of the potential is directly proportional to the strength of the stimulus and that means it is directly proportional to the concentration of sodium ions entering more and more positive charges entering will increase the amplitude will increase the amplitude and it will take the membrane potential from minus 70 to positive side or less negative side so that is how it is called graded potential so local potential is also called graded potential because it can be graded it can be graded that means the amount of potential difference from more negative to less negative that is happening will be directly related to the strength of the stimulus you increase the strength of the stimulus more and more sodium entry happens more and more positive charge will enter into the cell and taking the membrane potential from minus 70 to minus 65 or minus 60 so it is directly re related so there is a linear relationship between the strength of the stimulus and the amount of entry of sodium ions more and more sodium ions entering so what is happening the amplitude is gone increasing with the increase in the concentration of positive charge within the cell and now why we call it as local potential so consider this is the cell membrane and your application of stimulus is to a particular site and only with, within this site there is potential difference changes happening that is why it is called local potential that means it is non-propagatory and this is not action potential this is different from action potential local potential is different from action potential local potentials are non propagatory potentials and these are slight changes fluctuations within the potential at the site of stimulus only where on the cell membrane where the stimulus is applied only in that site there is slight changes in the potential difference from the resting state so if you consider the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt at the site at this site of the cell membrane and here only there is there will be slight fluctuation from minus 70 to minus 65 millivolt or minus 60 millivolt depending upon the amount of positive charge entering into the cell only at that site only at that side that is why it is called local potential 
Now you can understand one more property of this local potential that we call it as summation. Summation. See now consider this is a graph where the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt. If you apply a stimulus, first one stimulus which is of very lower strength, it can bring sodium ions into the cell very few number of positive charge into the cell so that the membrane potential from the minus millivolt will move to a slightly lower or positive charge of consider minus 65 millivolt with the first strength. I will give an example of one more stimulus consider now this if you apply a stimulus to of double the strength of the first stimulus what happens here more and more positive charges will enter compared to the first example so that from minus 70 millivolt the membrane potential will move to minus 60 millivolt if at all these two stimuli are applied together what is happening now we will see in a graph where both the stimuli are applied together see now stimulus 1 is taking the membrane potential from minus 70 to minus 65 if you apply the second stimulus very quickly what is happening so this will take around 10 so that means it will reach minus 55 millivolt so this is the summation of local or graded potentials so when two or more stimulus are applied in so simultaneously or in a quick manner the amplitude is getting summated the pro so this is how uh, you can differentiate the summations in terms of two types spatial summation and temporal summation these two will be explained in subsequent classes so this is all about local potential or graded potential so now we'll come to some examples where we find these local potentials or graded potentials consider this is a neuron and this is the nerve terminal I am expanding the nerve terminal synaptic ends and this is the cell body with the dendrites this nerve terminal will have vesicles filled with neurotransmitters consider neurotransmitter which is excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate so how this neuron will send the signal to the neighboring neuron we'll discuss now so this is the first neuron how it send the signal to the second neuron so how these two neurons communicate so first neuron will communicate with the second neuron by release of neurotransmitter by exocytosis and this neurotransmitters will bind to the channels ligand gated channels opening of the gate of the channel will result in entry of positively charged ions so consider if there is entry of sodium ion into the postsynaptic neuron there is increased positivity inside the membrane so from minus 70 millivolt which is resting state because of the entry of positivity charges the membrane potential will become less positive less negative or towards positive it goes towards positive side so it can be up from minus 70 it can go to minus 65 or minus 60 so that is how so we call it as depolarization
depolarization of cell membrane so initially which was minus 70 millivolt more negative inside because of the entry of positive charge what is happening because of the entry of positive charge the membrane potential from minus 70 is moving towards minus 65 or minus 60 so this movement of change of membrane potential from minus 70 millivolt towards less negative is called depolarization and the resting state is called polarized state so deviation from polarized state is depolarization deviation from polarized state is depolarization so polarized state is resting state resting state means inside is more negative depolarized state means inside becomes positive because of entry of sodium ions positively charged ions and uh, this entry of sodium ions will take the membrane potential from minus towards positive side so we call it as depolarizing potential depolarizing potential so graded potential or local potentials can be depolarizing potentials in a graph you can show it as depolarizing potential so consider from minus 70 it is going towards minus 60 and this is because of the entry of positive charge now after a few few minutes or few milliseconds uh, this potential will not last for longer duration it decays it dies back it comes to uh, minus 70 millivolt how is how is it happening so this is because of efflux of positive charge even though sodium has entered the sodium is not going out here this is efflux of potassium ions through leaky potassium channels you understand this so this is a cell the cell membrane whenever there is a stimulus applied the sodium is entering entry of sodium will bring the positive charges but once the stimulus is taken out this sodium is not moving out instead of movement of sodium there is more of potassium moving out the leaky potassium channels work more and more so potassium continuously move out taking out the positive charge and also the sodium ionic concentration is restored back by pumping of sodium through sodium potassium ATPS pump also so that is how the membrane potential which has changed from minus 70 millivolt to minus 60 millivolt um, during the application of uh, stimulus is restored back to resting state membrane potential is restored back to res resting state so here in the post synaptic neuron the potential deflection that is happening because of the entry of sodium ions we call it as excitatory post synaptic potential so excitatory post synaptic potential we call it as epsp is an example this is an example of what local potential this is an example of local potential excitatory postsynaptic potential is an example of local potential and how this excitatory postsynaptic potential is generated this is generated because of release of excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate and this excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate will bind to the channels sodium channels opening up of sodium channels opening sodium channels and entry of sodium into the cell so increased positivity within the cell or we call it as depolarization so depolarizing potential is generated so local potential depolarizing potential is generated within the postsynaptic neuron so by the entry of positively charged ions so this is one example for local potentials so local potentials need not be only depolarizing potentials local potentials can also be hyperpolarizing potential what do you mean by hyperpolarization we'll explain now
see the polarized state is the negative state of the cell the inside the cell at the resting state inside the cell is more negative that is polarized state hyperpolarized state means more and more negative inside the cell hyper polarized state is nothing but more and more negative inside the cell more and more negative inside the cell compared to the polarized state polarized state how it is see this is the cell membrane and the polarized state is because of the leakage of potassium ions through potassium leaky channels and the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt if there is more and more continuous leakage of potassium ions what happens the resting membrane potential will become more and more and more negative from minus 70 it can go up to minus 75 minus 80 or even minus 90 millivolt the reason for uh, this hyperpolarization is because of continuous efflux of positive charges or also it can be because of influx of negative charge like chloride so chloride concentration is more outside compared to inside and influx of continuous influx of negative charge to inside will also bring the negativity inside and the inside becomes within the cell membrane inside becomes more and more negative compared to the resting membrane potential of minus 70 it will it can be go up to minus 90 millivolt so this is hyperpolarization and hyperpolarizing potentials are generated because of continuous efflux of positive charge or continuous influx of negative charged ions so now you can consider with an example of a neurotransmitter if it is a inhibitory neurotransmitter that is released so consider this is the presynaptic neuron and the synaptic vesicles these are the neurotransmitters which are present in the neurotransmitters which are present in the synaptic vesicles and this neurotransmitter considered this is an inhibitory neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter released will bind to the receptor will bind to the receptor and opening up of the gates of chloride channels so what happens now there is influx of negatively charged ions influx of negatively charged ions so what happens to the membrane potential from minus 70 millivolt does it go towards positivity or does it go towards negativity it goes towards negativity because of more and more negatively charged ions are entering so this can happen because of release of inhibitory neurotransmitter and the graded potential which is developed here consider it is more uh, negative consider it is minus uh, 75 millivolt and this minus 75 millivolt that is generated here is inhibitory post synaptic potential IPSP inhibitory post synaptic potential generated minus 75 millivolt is because of the influx of negative charges increasing the negativity within the cell or it can also be because of efflux of more and more efflux of positive charge like sodium so binding of inhibitory neurotransmitter opening up of gates for the potassium channels ligand gated potassium channel opening potassium efflux taking out the positive charge inside becomes more and more negative so with these two explanations the inside of the cell becomes more negative compared to the resting state so the resting membrane potential which was minus 70 is taken to more and more negative potentials this is inhibitory postsynaptic potentials or hyperpolarizing potential so you understood local potential can be either depolarizing potential or hyperpolarizing potential so this is hyperpolarizing potential so here this was depolarizing potential Depolarizing potential happens when there is influx of positively charged ions. 
hyper polarizing potential happens when there is influx of negatively charged ions or efflux of positively charged ions hyper polarizing means more and more negativity depolarizing means more and more positivity now let me give one more example for graded potential or local potential and we call it as non propagatory potential because it is not an action potential and it doesn't spread it is localized to the area of application of stimulus only one more example is neuromuscular junction level the generation of end plate potential end plate potential end plate potential is also an example of local potential so what is this end plate potential so you might be knowing what is neuromuscular junction nmj so neuromuscular junction is the junction between the nerve terminal and the skeletal muscle membrane consider this is the skeletal muscle and this is the synaptic knob so synaptic knob and this is the skeletal muscle so the junction this junction is called the neuromuscular junction and how this skeletal muscle is getting excited how this skeletal muscle is getting the signals from the neuron is through the release of neurotransmitter from the synaptic vesicles which are present within the synaptic terminals so these neurotransmitters will reach the muscle membrane bind to the receptors over the muscle membrane and resulting in opening up of ligand gated channels so ligand gated sodium channels are open sodium will start entering into the skeletal muscles so sodium will start entering into the skeletal muscles so influx of positive charge happens here and the membrane potential which was around minus 90 millivolt at resting state for the skeletal muscle is altered by the entry of positive charge to minus 85 millivolt or minus 80 millivolt so this is minus 70 millivolt is the resting membrane potential and minus 85 or minus 80 millivolt is the end plate potential end plate potential that is the local potential or graded potential that is generated because of entry of sodium ions into the cell by opening up of ligand gated sodium channels so what is the ligand here ligand is a chemical substance that is the neurotransmitter binding to the sodium channel so that we can explain in subsequent class where we will be discussing the neuromuscular transmission in detail so this is all about local potentials or graded potentials which are non propagatory potentials and they are also called electrotonic potentials so these local potentials can be hyperpolarizing potentials or depolarizing potentials excitatory postsynaptic potential inhibitory postsynaptic potential end plate potential and the receptor potentials are some of the examples for local potentials thank you